Good morning. Today we're going to talk about Poop Walk. A very interesting glitch with a very unfortunate name. Putting that aside, in order to pull it off you'll need to be familiar with flexing, aka equip slot manipulation. If you're not, check the description for a link. Otherwise, let's get going. So, what is Poop Walk? Well, this is not Poop Walk. And this is. The technical details are not understood at the moment, but the upshot is that the distance every body part moves during an animation is halved, as you can see here. The first requirement to trigger Poop Walk is to hold an item that doesn't exist in your right hand. That sounds like a tall order, but with flexing it's quite simple. Normally when we flex an item we're looking for an ID that's valid in two different categories, but in this case what we need is any item whose ID is not valid in the weapon category. I'll use a dark sign for this example, but it can be almost anything you want. You can tell you're holding the invalid item because it shows an empty ammo counter on the HUD. Now you'll notice that performing certain actions like parrying with your offhand cause you to T-pose. Generally speaking, all you need to do is activate that T-pose on the exact frame you transition from any animation back to idle. The quickest and easiest animation to use is lowering your shield, so equip anything that can block in your offhand. Hold it up, release it, then try to parry when the recovery animation finishes. How long you block doesn't matter, so you can either just tap it, or hold and release at your leisure. If you see the T-pose, that means you parried too early. If you don't see it, but you don't start poop walking, then you parried too late. One final note is that Poop Walk actually stacks. You won't be able to see the T-pose after you've done it once, but if you perform the same inputs, your animation distance will be halved again, and you can repeat it as many times as you want. By this point, you're probably wondering what the point of all this is. Of course, the main benefit is just that it looks hilarious, but I'll let you explore that on your own. Believe it or not, there are a couple practical applications of Poop Walking as well. First up is premature fog gate exiting. Because your animations are halved, and walking through a fog gate is just a canned animation, you'll only cover half the ground you should've. In many cases, the cutscene or AI triggers for a boss don't extend all the way up to the fog gate, so by positioning yourself carefully, you can enter the room far enough to shoot the boss, but not far enough for it to notice you. The second trick is ladder clipping. In order to determine when you should climb off a ladder, the game simply counts the number of steps you've taken. Since each step only takes you half the distance with poop walk, you'll climb off the ladder before you make it to the top. Doing this from the bottom up isn't too interesting, but things get weirder coming from the top down. The normal 180 degree turn when you climb on the ladder becomes only a 90 degree turn, so when you climb off, you may end up somewhere pretty strange. The climbing down and sliding down animations put you in slightly different places, which may be helpful, and by stacking poop walk, you can change both your angle and the height you fall off at. Finally, if you need to leave the ladder early, you can just punch your way off, which is usually simpler than stacking more poop walks. At the moment, these are the only major tricks we know of, but with how many ladders and fog gates there are in the game, there are plenty of things to test already. You can find some concrete demonstrations in other videos on my channel if you'd like to know more, and feel free to post any questions or concerns down below. Thanks for watching.